The NWP workflow begins by creating the initial and boundary conditions for running the WARF model. This can be done in a couple steps using WPS, namely the GeoGrid, UnGrid, and MechGrid programs, as well as the real program from WARF. For the Hurricane Sandy case, we use GFS forecast files for the initialization data. The model domain can be seen here and was configured to capture the events of Hurricane Sandy. Since this demonstration uses Docker, we can click on the plus icon next to Docker commands to expand the procedures for running the Hurricane Sandy case using Docker. The first step is optional and allows you to create a plot of the computational domain that is defined in the nameless.wps file. By executing this very long docker run command, docker uses the dt center python container to execute python in the docker container using the provided run python domain script. In addition, it uses information from the nameless.wps file located in the local scripts directory, and the output is a PNG of the domain that is placed in the Python PRD output directory. You may also notice these backward slashes at the end of some of the lines. These are Unix syntax that are indicating a line continuation, and these are often used to break up very long commands into something that's a little bit more readable. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this command into our AWS terminal window and press enter. And we can see that this program has started and now has returned to the command prompt and has finished. If we do an ls on the Python PRD directory, we see this new PNG file. We can use the display utility to view this new PNG file and verify that the domain we created is what we expect and want to use in our run. Since we are running the Hurricane Sandy case, we should see that this domain that we have just created matches the one shown in the online tutorial. And indeed, these domains look the same, so this step is complete and we are ready to move on to step number two. In step two, we'll run the WPS components, GeoGrid, UnGrid, and MechGrid. To do this, we'll execute another very long Docker run command. In this case, Docker will use the DT Center WPS WARF container, along with previously downloaded data located in the data directory, and nameless located in the local scripts directory. These are used along with the provided run WPS script to execute the GeoGrid, UnGrid, and MechGrid programs. The output is placed in the WPS PRD output directory. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this command into our AWS terminal window and press enter. While we're waiting for these programs to run, we can monitor the progress in the log files by logging into our instance in another terminal window. So I have this other terminal window ready to go and we're in the top level directory. So we'll navigate into the Sandy directory and further into the WPS PRD directory. And we see that there are already files populating here. We can use the tail utility to monitor the progress of a program by looking at the run log file, for example, run underscore grib dot log. And we see that the ungrib program is still running. You can do a control C to exit the tail utility. You may also notice that there are some files that look like broken links with red letters and black highlighting. While this may seem like an error, it's actually just an artifact of being outside of the container. So taking a look at our first terminal window, we see that it says it's done with WPS. So let's do one more list of the WPS PRD directory in our previous window and examine the files. We see that we have a GOM netcdf file from the GeoGrid program 
intermediate files from the ungrid program and MetM NetCDF files from the MetGrid program. And these match the files that we expect from the online tutorial. So our WPS step number two was successful, and we can now move on to step number three. In step number three, we'll run the real.exe program. Again, we'll execute a very long Docker run command. In this case, Docker again uses the DT Center WPS Wharf container, but in this case, it calls the provided run real script in order to execute the real.exe program. The output is placed in the Wharf PRD output directory. So let's go ahead and copy and paste this command into our AWS terminal window and press enter. You could again monitor the log files in a separate terminal window, but this one actually completes pretty quickly. And as you can see, it's already done. So let's go into the Wharf PRD directory and see what happened. We're looking for files called Wharf BDY and Wharf input. We see both of these files indicating that the real program completed successfully. We can also take a look at the log files, in this case, the RSL files, and look for a message saying success complete real underscore EM. With step three finishing successfully, that completes running the NWP initialization components. So you're now ready to move on to running the data assimilation component.